A single point of failure is one part of a system that when it fails, it brings the whole system down with it, and in simple terms, any component that could cause the whole system to fail is called a single point of failure. For example, if you have a web application where the database is on a single server, if that server goes down, your whole application will become unavailable, and this will impact the experience and it will potentially lead to data loss. And that's not the only issue, let's have a look at why this is a problem in system design. First of all, this brings a reliability issue, because a single failure can take the entire system down, which could mean business losses and also user dissatisfaction. These kind of systems are also hard to scale, as each component adds a risk of failure. And it also brings a security issue, because a single vulnerable entry point makes it easier for attackers to compromise the whole system. Let's go over some common single points of failure in system design. Often the database is the backbone of an application, and if it's set up on a single server without replication, any failure can take the whole application offline. The next part is load balancers. While these are supposed to improve reliability, if there is only one load balancer and it fails, your entire system will go down. Next failure point is your APIs. When your application runs on a single server, the whole system can go down if that one server fails. And another common issue is having a single network link. For instance, if your only connection to the internet fails, in this case you won't be able to access anything that you stored on the internet. Now let's have a look at some strategies to eliminate the single points of failure. First, let's have a look at the database scenario. One of the best ways to eliminate this is by adding redundancy, where we duplicate critical components like the database. And if we have multiple database replicas, if one of them fails, the others will still keep running and the whole system will continue to function properly. Next, for the API servers, we can consider deploying multiple API servers in a failover configuration. So this way, if one of these API servers fails, the traffic is seamlessly routed through the another API. And for the load balancers and other critical services, we can implement failover mechanisms. This means that we can have a failover mechanism for load balancers, and if one of these goes down, the other one will take over immediately. And another strategy is to have geographic distribution. For systems with global reach, we can consider distributing servers across multiple regions, and this will prevent location-based failures from affecting the whole system. Another option is to continuously monitor the systems and set up alerts to detect failures early, and this will help us to be notified and address the issue before they impact the end users. And if you'd like to learn more on how to replicate the database in such systems to improve the reliability, then be sure to check out this video next.